and even now it's like I try not to correct people too much as you know, if we, we talk about what is it, how do you teach as a teacher, a teaching methodology, my personal f- philosophy is that you shouldn't, you shouldn't impede the student very much with a lot of words. Mm-hmm. They have to learn and, and grow and get it out of their system on their own. So if we take Shi Honage, for instance, you demonstrate the technique, you make a couple of points, you let everybody go. And right. then you just get people to do the technique as many times as they can. Because how they get better is reps on the technique. And so we, you know, we also want to, I also have this idea that you really need them to get into this subconscious pattern of programming to where their body starts to move like Aikido. But if I constantly stop them, they're going to come out of subconscious and go back into conscious and listen to what I have to say because I'm trying to be smart, pontificate about the technique. They're, they can't learn. You cannot learn Aikido consciously. You can only your body can only learn it subconsciously. And so the more you talk, the less they do, the slower they learn the technique. Yeah. Yeah. I personally believe that the more you talk, the less they the less they do and the and the slower they get better. The more they just do it and do it and do it, their body will come about and then they'll just be doing it. But if I stop them and pontificate on the their toe your toe needs to be at thirty nine degrees. Bill, you don't obviously you failed geometry class. That's thirty two degrees. Right. Your toe needs to be at thirty nine degrees. They're never gonna understand that. Right. Right? So if I say to you, I'm thinking of a fruit. It's round, it can be sweet, it can be sour, you know, it grows on a tree. What fruit am I thinking of? Orange lemon. Well, I'm thinking of grapefruit, so you obviously are an idiot. <laughs> See, like it, you're telling them things which they have no frame of reference of what you're talking about. Right. Because they have to learn it with their bodies first. And you can't learn Aikido with your mind. Contrary to popular opinion, you cannot learn things in a conscious thing where you're like going, uh-huh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, you must learn it subconsciously to where when you're driving down the street, you go, rrr, rrr. you don't drive down the street and go, there's a car coming. What should I do? Turn. No, your yeah. body has to just go, rrr, rrr, and you go, whoa, that was crazy. How did I know to do that? You learn that subconsciously. So that's the hard part about learning things and teaching things, you know, what does it mean to be a good teacher? Right. So when you think about like teaching methodologies, old school, new school, right? Like if you think about what people understand today, they Google um, polled their employees and they asked them to rank from one to 10, the characteristics of a good manager. (laughs) The 10th was technical ability. Right technical prowess. The first was being a good coach. Yeah. So what does it mean to be a good coach, right? What does it mean to teach someone something? I I want you to do the techniques as many times as you can because you have to get that technique into your body so that when a mugger jumps out of the darkness, you're not like, "Oh, what what which hand am I supposed to use?" Yeah. Your body goes right into Nikkyo, it goes right into Sankyo, it goes right into this boom 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 because it's become what they call second nature. <laughs>